Hello all and welcome along to yet another edition of the ever popular Flat Earth Friday. My name is Simon Dan and I'm glad you can join me. Today I want to talk about movement, something we hear all the time from Flat Earthers is how the Earth is motionless. We don't rotate, we don't orbit the Sun, the solar system does not orbit the galactic centre and the galaxy does not move through expanding space. With claims like this you'd expect empirical evidence, wouldn't you? Not just stating that because we can't feel this motion, then we aren't moving. Check out my video on the senses for more on that. However, the Flat Earthers have another ace up their sleeve, one which they use all the time. And it goes something like this. If we are moving through space at such high speeds, why is it that the stars don't change position? Why is it that we see the same constellations year after year? Well, today I'm going to finally put this one to bed in the hope that they can no longer use it as evidence. The short answer is that the stars do move, and I'm not just talking about the movement we see as the Earth rotates, although that should be proof enough that we're rotating. I'm talking about a much more subtle movement, movement which, once explained, will completely annihilate a motionless Earth. It's important to state though that most of this stellar movement is apparent motion due to the fact that we as a planet are moving in more than one dimension. There is some of what we call proper motion, but it's extremely insignificant. Let's start with this. How is it that all this mov movement is taking place out in space? How do we see the same stars every night? How, how does we see the same constellations night after night. The, we've seen the same stars in the sky for thousands of years throughout recorded history. If all these supposed movements are taking place out there in space, why do we still, why, why do we not have a different night sky every night? It doesn't make sense. We should have a different sky every night if all those movements are taking place. Wouldn't you think so? It is true that we are orbiting the Sun. It is also true that the Sun and the rest of the solar system is orbiting the galactic centre. And finally, it is also true that the galaxy itself is hurtling through space. Edwin Hubble proved that last one without question. However, as usual with the Flat Earthers, they haven't bothered to actually look into the facts of it all at all. Even on the darkest night, in the most rural location, the stars we see with just our eyes are all inside this red circle. That means that we are only seeing stars in our absolute nearest vicinity, stars that are also orbiting the galactic centre at the same speed we are. If these stars are orbiting just as we are, then of course they will stay in roughly the same position relative to us. However, there is some proper motion here. Just keep in mind the stars are still very far away and that space is very, very big. The star with the highest proper motion is called Bernard's star. It's relatively close, at only six light years away, and because of that we see it move the width of the diameter of the moon over a 180 year period. Way too slow to see in a human lifetime, but this picture here shows its movement over a four year period against the stars behind it. Quite conclusive, wouldn't you say? So that deals with the star's actual movement. However, their apparent positions do change as well, both periodically throughout the year as well as on a much longer time scale. This is Vega. It sits in the constellation of Lyra and is one of the brightest stars in the summer sky. What if I was to tell you that in 12,000 years time Vega will be the North Star, or that in the year 2000 BC Thuban was the Pole Star? What we're dealing with here is physics on a grand scale. If you spin a spinning top, what happens? The top wobbles slightly as it spins. The same thing happens to the Earth in a phenomenon known as precession. It wobbles very slowly though, and the cycle for North Stars, North stars lasts about 20,000 years. If you do an imaginary line from the North Pole up to the skies, you trace out a small circle in the sky. Whichever star is closest to the North Celestial Pole at any one time becomes the North Star. Currently it's Polaris. In future it will be Eryl and Eldemaron before Vega gets its turn. 
We're not quite finished yet, as we still have to consider stellar parallax. I want you to hold your finger out at arm's length and close your left eye. Make a note of what object is behind your finger. Now open your left eye and close your right. You should notice that the background has moved relative to your finger. This happens because you're viewing your finger from a slightly different angle. The gap between your eyes is approximately 5 to 6 centimetres, and this makes a difference. It's called parallax, and it happens with stars too. Now, imagine if our two vantage points are much further apart than our eyes, say 300 million kilometres. This is how stellar parallax works. We note a star's position at a certain time of year, then we wait six months until we are on the opposite point of our orbit and we note the position again. Many of the stars in our sky are relatively close to us and it is these stars that appear to move against the background of stars further away. So there you have it. Stars do move over time. Who'd have thought it? An entire reason for a motion motionless Earth completely debunked. If you see anyone using this as a reason for a motionless Earth, you should immediately post the link to this video. Well, that about wraps it up for me today. Thank you all for watching. A like and subscribe would be thoroughly appreciated. If you've managed to stay this long, then you should also like to take a look at the channel's Patreon page. There are loads of rewards up for grabs there. I'll leave the link in the description. Until next time, I've been Simon Dan. Thank you very much. Have a great day.